Are you gonna see mommy run the marathon? Yeah. <laughs> Guys, today I visited a marathon and I recorded it with my DJI Osmo Action 4. I didn't actually run the marathon, but I was recording the marathon with this. So in this video, I'm gonna show you my settings for, well, pretty much any scenario with this camera and how you edit the video files and get the best out of them. So they're going to look really professional-like. And even if I was to run the marathon, I would use exactly the same settings. So let's go. came to the finish line. Yeah. You just have to find her in this crowd. A whole bunch of people. So the record wasn't broken. I mean like the 42 kilometer marathon record. Even the local record wasn't broken. So the time was two hours and eight minutes I think and the record is two hours and four minutes and the world record is one hour and 58. <laughs> Finally the full team. <laughs> okay, so as for the settings, uh, first of all, I'm using the HVC codec, not the H.264 because this gives me better quality with a smaller file. And as for the settings, I'm always going with the pro mode. I'm using D-Log M uh, and for the exposure, I have it set to auto, but I am controlling my shutter speed. So I'm limiting my shutter speed between one one hundredth of a second and one eight thousandth of a second. And for the ISO, one hundred to thirty two hundred. So that's pretty much it. And my exposure value is set to, well, EV zero. Now, one more thing that I have is the uh, sharpness and noise reduction. Both of these are set to minus two. Oh yeah, and uh, of course, D-Log M for the colors. Okay, so here I have DaVinci Resolve opened up and I'm going to import the files straight from my camera. So right in here, now since these are 10-bit files because I was recording with D-Log M, I'm going to select all of them, clip attributes, and I'm going to go with the full data levels. So this is going to give me a narrow waveform and a little bit more room to work with. It's not necessary to do this, but I do it for every 10-bit video recording. Now before we start, we need to set the resolution, the frame rate, and the color space before we start tinkering in DaVinci Resolve. So we go here under the settings, master settings, I'm going to go with a 4K video resolution, and I'm, I'm always using the DCI, no video format, so I can you know, sh shift the frame up and down a little bit. So 25 frames per second because I'm always recording with 25. And for color management, I'm going to go with the Vinci's wide gamut for my time light color space, so where I'll actually be working with the video. And the output color space is going to be a Rec. 709 and Gamma 2.4. This is the most standard export color space for any type of, well, application, as long as it's not HDR. We're not doing HDR, we're doing YouTube videos. So, save this. I'm going to select all of the files, so, uh, and just create a new timeline. I'm gonna call it timeline one, like this. And here we have, so everything now fits in. Now the videos were recorded with 25 frames per second in 4K. So here I have 4K and 25 frames per second. Now in order for my MacBook Air to run smoothly, I'm actually going to go here under playback and use half the resolution for my playback, so here in on the display. And since I'm running this off my memory card of the actual camera, it's taking a little bit of time for the, you know, for the whole thing to be processed, but I wanna find a video clip uh, where the guy came to the finish, so the winner, I think it was this guy, so right over here. Okay, so this was the winning runner, and I'm going to select my video, so I'm going to cut the video over here, so cut before, and then cut after as he's running by to about this far away. Cut the video over here and I'm going to work just on this video. Ah, light. Thanks, man. Okay. Yeah, much better. It's gonna be orange from now on. <laughs> I'm using auto white. Actually, I'm not using auto white balance. I'm using 5500 Kelvin. So things are going to be a bit more orangey. So let's use this clip as a reference. This clip is okay because there's a lot of motion. The guy is running and the camera is moving. And as you can see, there is absolutely no motion blur. So everything is recorded with a too much fast of a shutter speed. I think the shutter speed was way over one one thousandth of a second. 
because I'm you know, limiting it to between 1 hundredth of a second and 8 thousandths. This is really cool because the stabilization will then always work on an action camera. If you want to learn more about this, watch this video over here. But I'm always shooting with the, exactly the same settings. So let's work with this video right here. So let's find a hero shot. I think, I think it's this guy, so right over here. So this is going to be like my main, my main frame of the whole clip. I'm going to go under color settings. And here in DaVinci Resolve, as you know, we work with nodes. So I'm going to just add, well, a few nodes. And, th and this is going to be like a universal color grading process. You can color grade every camera the same way. One, two, three, four, five, six nodes. So these are the six nodes. I'm going to label them. So this is the node structure that I typically go with. So the first one is for the LUT. In case I'm using a camera that doesn't have a proper lock, even though here you have D log M, it's not a proper lock. So I need to convert the lock from, well, lock into a Rec 709 standard looking colors. So this is going to be the first node. Then I have a structure over here. These four nodes are, well, first I'm going to transform my regular colors into DaVinci Resolve colors, work with them here. So exposure and color within that really wide color space, wide gamut and then transform it back into Rec. 709. It is a bit of a detour, but you can use the same process with every camera. And in case the camera has a proper log picture profile, you can actually convert that right over here from the camera log into Rec. 709, or actually from camera log into that DaVinci wide gamut. So let's do this over here. So I'm going to search for my color space, transform, bring this guy over here. Now, and I'm going to use my Rec. 709 because I'm using the LUD before to transform everything to Rec. 709. And I'm going to transform this into DaVinci Wide Gamut and DaVinci Intermediate. And then for the output color space transform, again, this time around, I'm going to go from DaVinci Wide Gamut and DaVinci Intermediate back into a uh, Rec. 709. And here I'm going to choose my gamma so that it matches my output color space. So just to explain, the LUT is going to transform my footage, my D-Log M into Rec. 709. Then I'm transforming that into the Vinci wide gamut. I'm working with the exposure and color in that wide gamut color space, then transforming it back into Rec. 709. And in the end, I need to add some sharpness because I've used the sharpness minus two on the camera. It's always better to add sharpness in post. So right here, I'm just going to go with this much. So this is for my sharpening and for the LUT, I have the official DJI Osmo Action for LUT. Links are down in the description. So I'm just going to bring this onto the first clip right over here. And this is kind of the end result, but I have a lot of room to work with here. So if we go all the way from the start, so this is the log footage. Then we go into Rec. 709. Then I transform this in the Vinci wide gamut. You can see how washed out this is. Then I have two nodes for corrections. So the exposure, the color, the saturation. And then I can transform that back into Rec. 709. And then I add the sharpness. So since I have this setup, I'm going to bump up the exposure. So I'm just going to use the offset slider to make everything wider. You can see how the highlights over here are not getting crushed because I'm using this wide gamut color space workflow. And then I can also separately adjust the brights, shadows, or the, or the lift, the, the mid-tones, like this. I can also then add a bit more contrast. This would be like before and after. Now quite a big, quite a big upgrade. I'm really pushing this a lot. And then for the colors, I'm just going to just bump up the colors. So maybe go to, I don't know, about 60 like this, transforming that back and then the sharpness. So if we look at it before and after, yeah, I mean, this now looks really cool. So the colors are cool, the contrast is cool, everything is preserved and the workflow, as I said, can be used for every camera, even the Sony full frame with its proper S-Log3. But there are more things that we have to work with. So let's get back into this clip. And for this, you will need the full DaVinci Resolve. I do encourage you to get the full DaVinci Resolve because it is a proper video editor. So as you can see, there's absolutely no motion blur. If I freeze the frame, everything is solid. So there's no blurriness. So I'm going to add motion blur. So we're going to go under effects, 
and then add motion blur. Let's find it over here. Double click on this. So now we have motion blur in the video. And I think this is a bit too much. I typically go with around 30 like this and we can do the better or the faster. It doesn't really matter. And there we have it. So now the video with motion blur with proper color grades recorded on the DJI Osmo Action 4. And if this was shot in low light, I would still use the same settings, but I would have to denoise the image first. So this is where I would actually add a note right at the beginning. So Shift S to put another note over here. I'm gonna label this. And this is where I would again use DaVinci Resolve Studios. Awesome, really cool AI denoiser. This really works well. So I would just go here, I would set three frames. So it takes three frames, it averages out over three frames. Faster, that's okay. And here I would play with these numbers. I would probably go up to around 20 to get the noise out. Now here in this case there was no noise because it was midday and I think my ISO was you know, 100. But this is pretty much the nose structure that I would use for, well, any video, any camera, any type, anything. So this really works well and with the settings that I've showed you, you can get some really amazing videos from your DJI Osmo Action 4. So there you have it. This is how you can get the most out of your action camera, even if it's not a DJI camera. Just follow these steps and you will get some really cool results. So if you have any comments or questions, leave that down below. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. Hit the like button for the algorithm. That really, really helps and it's totally free. And if you want to stay on the channel, then watch this video over here. Thank you and I'll see you in this one. Bye bye.